Hi, everybody. <laughs> I believe that in this age of technology, one of the key questions, and maybe it's the key question for education, is this. What do we keep in our heads, and what do we delegate and outsource to our machines? And how do we find that balance? And that's what my new book, Brain Game, is about, which Sir Kevin said nice enough to endorse. My perspective is that what's making us better is not brain science. Brain science is teaching us many things. It's very interesting, but it's not far advanced enough to help us learn what to do. What's making us better is connecting our brains to technology, but only if we do that in a wise way. So I've been thinking about digital wisdom, which is combining those things that our brains do better with those things that machines do better and trying to do it in the best possible way. Now, we've been experimenting in lots of ways to do this. Some agree, some disagree with some of these things. And most of this conference, my guess is, is going to be about those things that machines do better or are getting to do better. So I thought I'd focus a little bit on the things that the brain and humans do better. And what are those two things for teachers and students that the human, uh, I think for the foreseeable future, will do better? For teachers, it's providing empathy. It's understanding the kid, putting your hands on his shoulder, knowing how to help him or her know where to go. For students, it's passion. Machines don't have passion. And so the student needs that. So let's dig a little deeper into the slogans that we've been hearing. When we see, for example, expanding student horizons, I agree, but let's ask, why do we want to expand them? Not just because they're bigger. My view is so that the students can find their passion. They can see a wider place to look. When we see things like encouraging students' passion to achieve, we have to think, well, do we mean that achievement is everything and passion is kind of down there? Or do we mean, in my view, that passion is what we have to do first, and that's what's going to lead us to achievement? When we see developing students' passion to learn, do we mean learn about everything? And if that's our expectation, we're, of course, never going to get there. So I think it's really about teaching them to learn about whatever it is they are passionate about and to find things to be passionate about. So my view is that helping kids find and follow their passion is really the key to a 21st century education because that's what provides the motivation, that's what provides the learning, that's what eventually will get these people the good jobs that they like and I think in the long run provide happiness. Of course, how do we do it? Well, I think there are four things that I would encourage all teachers to do. The first, of course, is to listen. Because if we don't know the passion of every student, it's very hard to encourage it. And when I listen, I find that the passions are all over the place. So we really have to listen and ask about that. Or else what we get is what the kids call cellophane kids. The teacher looks right through them at the curriculum and at the test scores, and the kids become invisible. Second thing, respect. Today we have mutual disrespect. And I've been talking for a decade now about natives and immigrants, and one thing that's led to, of course, is lots of division. And even wars that people fight over this stuff. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to tell you that the war is over. The natives won! And our job now is to make peace and to move forward to mutual respect, and to digital wisdom. In the new century, what we need is a new balance of things like top-down and bottoms-up, old and new, past and future, technology and pedagogy. Remember, a hundred years ago, we were ignoring half the world. The men were making all the decisions for the women. Well, thank goodness we got over that. And now we're better, yes. Well, guess what? We're doing it again. Because half the world is under 25, and all the educational decisions come top down. I think the next century is about changing that as well. We need to overexpect from our students. Today's student capabilities are far greater than they've ever been. They're not less. And what's making them better is connecting their brains to technology wisely. And lastly, and this is so important, we have to empower all teachers to dare to do what they know is right. 
because my experience is teachers know what they want to do and what the kids need, but somehow somebody has convinced them that their job is just to cover the curriculum. Not. It's to bring our kids into the future equipped with the skills that will allow them to function and thrive in the 21st century. Now, that's scary, and they have to feel the fear. We all feel the fear, but they have to do it anyway. And the thing that's so important about that statement is that that's the definition of courage. So today's educators have to be courageous and daring, because things are changing so quickly that even with technology, things that may have been great yesterday or even today, and since we're in California, I'll show you this, grow old really quickly. And just on a slightly more serious note, let's not forget that while technology can truly inspire and help our kids, and we all know that and we want to do that, used poorly it can do damage. So we better be careful and search for digital wisdom. Yes, it can be hard. Yes, it can be scary. Sometimes it can even be unpleasant. But we can do this, folks. So let's help our kids find and follow their passion so that they can thrive in the future. Have a great conference.